Hey there, this is Kevin from Think Flight, and in this video I cover the wings of the ground effect glider, load test the wing spars, and let my imagination run wild. Here is what we got going on. So I created a channel on both sides of the uh, support, and then I'm going to take this fiberglass ribbon, and I secured it with CA here, just to get it started. But I'm just going to wrap that around until I run out of uni. And so this is basically just going to keep the root from bursting. Ideally, you would want to wrap the entire spar, but you guys kind of get how this build is going now. This is not a proper airplane. So we're just going to wrap where it's the most stress. Hopefully that will be enough. And if it's not, you guys will get a show. After wrapping the wing root spar, I sealed the root rib with cloth and epoxy, at which point the wing was ready to cover. After testing a few materials and much thought, I ended up going with a fabric covering as it is what I already had on hand and seemed to be the toughest for its weight. Initially, I tried to follow the instructions and use actual airplane grade fabric glue, but anywhere there was a pinhole in the fiberglass surface, the adhesive would dissolve the underlying foam. Considering the issue at hand and looking at what I had available, I decided to use laminating epoxy on the ribs and around the edges of the open structure and 3M90 everywhere else to attach the fabric. After tacking the fabric to the trailing edge of the wing with 3M90, we would carefully flip the fabric onto the wing before the epoxy began to set, and then tack the rest of the fabric in place and allow the epoxy to cure. Going back to the fuselage, I needed a hard point to attach the rear wing bolt. Using a Dremel, I routed a recess for a plywood plate, which was then set in place with Gorilla Glue and reinforced with fiberglass. Take your best guess in the comments as to how many bottles of Gorilla Glue I went through on this project. I'll let you know at the end. Reinforcing the planing portion of the fuselage seemed wise, so a triangular piece of foam was secured in place and then fiberglassed. Now that the wing bolt and planing support pieces were in place, the fuselage could be closed up. A piece of foam received an interior layer of fiberglass so that when finished, the area I would be standing on would have a strong sandwich structure. Some Gorilla Glue was poured on, activated, and the main upper deck secured in place. Once the main deck was in position, it was time to work on the rope attachment point. An X-shaped piece of plywood was cut out, a matching area of foam removed with a Dremel from the bottom of the fuselage, after which the plywood and two securing layers of fiberglass were epoxied in place. An internal carbon plate was cut for securing the U-bolt. Everything was epoxied in place, and that completed the rope attachment point. Two more foam bits were added to the fuselage to completely seal it, and then the top deck could be contoured. Supports were needed for the rear wing, at least out to the rear bolt attachment point. Some foam arms were added, then contoured, and finally fiberglass to give them strength. Once the fabric was secured to the wings, it needed to be tightened. Since the directions explicitly said not to use a heat gun for the job, I simply went with something that blows air of greatly elevated temperature instead, and that seemed to work out. To seal the fabric, I used two layers of butyrate dope, and in keeping with the home improvement store theme, some exterior house paint that supposedly resists mold and offers great UV protection. Sounds just like what the doctor ordered. Once the wings were all finished up, it was back to finishing the fuselage. Some plywood was added to the step as that area is prone to a lot of damage, and this should help a bit. The wing attachment points needed to be finalized, so the wings were positioned and bolt holes drilled, along with foam removal for bolt access. After that, some lightweight spackle was added to low areas, creating an even surface for the next step, fiberglassing. Once the fiberglass was in place and sanded, the fuselage could be primed. It is probably a good idea to get the planing area of the fuselage as smooth as possible to reduce towing force, so layer after layer of paint was added and sanded back until I had something decent. The nut used to capture each wing bolt needed to be secured in place.
accelerator. And then the bolt is tapped in place. And then I put this little wall here so that I can pour epoxy in there. It's kind of like a well, and it's going to look like the one up at the front. So when it's done, the bolt is epoxied in place. And then the bolt just comes out. And it appears to me. The initial plan is to stand on the fuselage and control the vehicle by weight shift. So a place to hang on was created out of pink foam, carbon, fiberglass, and yes, a broom handle. One mean lady lost her ride for this year's Halloween. We still needed to make the rudder for the glider. This would be constructed out of foam, carbon, fiberglass, and a wooden trailing edge from some trim I found at the local home improvement store. And finally, to finish up the glider structure, a rudder mounting fixture was fabricated that would allow me to capture the rudder with a single bolt. The rudder is a little flimsy, so I may end up adding wires to stabilize it. We'll see how it goes. A load test seemed like a good idea, so 30 pound jugs of water were placed on the wing to simulate about 1.8 Gs. The front wing should take about twice the load of the rear wing, and since the front and rear wing are constructed identically, I didn't bother testing the rear wing. Also, the wing is constructed identically top and bottom, so even though I am testing the load the wrong direction, it should tell me the same thing. With the handle already being mounted, it made testing the right way quite tricky. I wanted to see the whole thing in the water, so I put it together and had some fun visualizing flying over the surface at 25 miles an hour and making a childhood dream come true. There are a few details to finish up, See if you can spot them in the next video. If you made it this far, I'd like to let you know that this vehicle took exactly 8 bottles of Gorilla Glue to construct. Hit the like button or leave a comment if you feel others should see this, and thanks for watching!